God bless everyone. Welcome to His Words from Above Ministry, where by God's call, I am the past and founder, Elder Keith Ahops, and we're going to begin with prayer. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that everyone made it out. Sister Swan is even here at the beginning. We're so glad to see her, Father. Thank you and bless her all the more for being here and bless those things that had to come to pass for her to make it here, that they be well in thy sight and grow in thy sight. There be no evil repercussions from anything, for we know what day and time we exist in. Bless and let the spirit of comfort go before. Bless Sister Goodwin, God, you know what's going on in her heart. You know what's going on in her mind and spirit, but we know you. And we know that the power in us is greater than that which is in the world. Bless her, God. Bless everyone here. Bless those who made it out, God. And we I thank you for those online. But God, we just ask for an extra measure of grace for the ones that said, I had a busy day, but I'm going to make it out. We, we ask for an extra measure of grace for Elder Falk. We ask for an extra measure of grace for First Lady. And Minister Hobbs is having some issues with his back, but he made it out, Lord. He hurt his back trying to help the pastor get his phone. God, bless him even now. Loosen up those muscles in his back. And we pray for Sister Romy Legendre, who is having some diagnosed issues that you're going to fix. That the doctor said, this is what's wrong, but you said, but that's what's going to be right. Because I step in, I bring the light, and I am the healer. So we thank you that you're going to take care of her, but give her comfort until such a time as that healing takes place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for everyone. Hello, Sister Clark. You do. Great time to see you. <laughs> I praise the Lord for you being here. We're going to have, uh, and you know how the Lord has me to teach, so I'm not going to rush. If we get it done, we get it done. I do have scripture, but you know how God talks to me. So as soon as I read it, it's like, oh, okay. Your work, your labor is not in vain. That's going to be the title. Your labor is not in vain. So you know how the Lord does with me. First of all, we're going to talk about what is your labor? So who wants to go first? Tell, the title is your labor is not in vain. So what's your labor? I mean, before you say your labor is not in vain, you got to know what it is. So I don't have any volunteers before. Go ahead. I believe that my labor is to serve God on whatever level he puts me on. Praise the Lord. I believe that's my labor. Praise the Lord. Uh, for those that didn't hear, uh, Sister Swan said her labor is to, is to please the Lord and do whatever he gives to her hands. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? You got a mic on. Thank you, First Lady. They, they love your voice. And that encounters a lot. You know, like uh, Mr. Swan said, you know, uh, doing service unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and, and we do have scriptures. We'll get to them. Um, as a matter of fact, I may read them as we go to uh, I'm going to have to shrink my screen now. So First Lady and the rest of you, I will depend on you to let me know if somebody online makes a statement. Let me give the people online the scriptures. And First Lady, if you want to write them down, I am going to slow as far as I can. Uh, Psalms. And this is just some of the scriptures because you know how we are here. We love the word. Psalms 128. I think I may be missing something. I just got Psalms 128. Two. Thank you. Verse 2. Frank. 128 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23. Colossians. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slow down. I can hear first lady can tell me slow down. Colossians mm -hmm. chapter 3 verse 23 to 24. And it's always good to write them down and review them later. Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. And our devotion reading will be coming from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 57 to 58. One more time, we're not going to rush. If we got to do a part two, we'll do a part two. Uh, we'll get the scriptures, but I want, when we ask the question, and I love that song, who knows, we may try to sing it. Is my labor in vain? No, of course not. 
if up the road is eternal gain. But before we say that, because especially nowadays, remember what we say a lot of in church on the morning. They're not coming to church because they got to walk their dog. That's their labor Sunday morning. They're not coming to church because they're washing their car. It's the only chance I got. I got to wash it. What God gave me the car. So he wants me to take care of it. My day off is Sunday. Surely he doesn't want me to drive in a dirty car come Monday morning. So I'm going to wash that car. We, we know we're telling the truth. If you gave them church Monday night, any night of the week, they should find a reason. They'd have to do something else. Amen? So the question was, what is your labor? And Sister Swan and First Lady said, whatever God wants it to be. Anybody else before we move on? Because my next question, well, that one entails that because that's what should you be your labor. Now, I have a question for you, Lord Gay. In the world, all right, on this plane, does your labor define you? In the world, if you are a secretary, if you are a doctor, if you are, keep watch out for uh, Sister Clark. She just went out. If you are, oh, Elder got it. Thank you, Elder. If you are a doctor, if you are a lawyer, I'm saying that because they like to raise those up. But whatever you are, does the world define you by your labor? Does the world, yes, I'm being specific. Does the world define you by your labor? Anybody? I, oh, I, would, I would say uh, yes, because of whatever your profession is, you should know how to perform the job. Amen. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, see, we didn't put any evil spirit to it. We just said, does the world define your labor? And you're right. I mean, define you by your labor. And you're absolutely correct. The, the world does because the world expects you to be what you say that you are. If you change tires at Costco, then the world says you should know how to change tires. <laughs> the world does not expect to get their tires off the lift, drive down the street in tires. As you come to a stop at the light, you see the tires pass you by. So, it's, so we're not putting any evil in it, but the world does define you by your labor. If, if, if you cut grass, they expect when they see your house, your grass should be cut. They don't expect you to say, well, my grass is tore up because I cut everybody else's. So they do define it. Okay, now we go to the next level. In the spirit, does your labor define it? Your, does your, and I'll break it into two parts. In the spirit, does your spiritual labor define you? So we do that first. In the spirit, I was sorry that you smiling. Go ahead. Oh, no. no. Uh, in, okay. in the spirit, does your spiritual level, I mean work, labor, define? Very good. Because it's, it's just like, well, not just like any other job, it's more defining to me than, you know, a regular job. But if you're um, worshiping Christ and following his word, um, you're doing your best. I mean, you're doing your best for the Lord. You're doing your best to be the best. Amen. Amen. So that is, yes, in the spirit, your your spiritual work does define you, as you say, because you're giving God your best. El? It shouldn't. It doesn't necessarily do what I mean by that. There's some that are not living according to what they're supposed to be. Amen. By Amen. Uh, and that's all I say about that. <laughs> and as Elder brought up, we have to remind as Elder brought up, we have to remind people the proper use of a title is that man is recognizing the gift that the Lord has deposited in. So, if I'm, so okay, we're a church of God in Christ. Uh, by God's grace, we were speaking of the gifts of the Spirit before. Okay, there is a title called evangelist in the church of God in Christ. That means somebody will look at somebody and see this have the spirit of evangelism in them. So then, so everybody's on one accord then that doctrine will say, well, what do we think an evangelist should need? We're not saying that you can't be one if you don't have it. But what we're saying is we recognize you're an evangelist so that we all have an agreement on what an evangelist should have to equip them. We got a couple of courses we want you to take. Does that mean that the person can't evangelize when they go out in the street? No, it does not. 
It just means in the doctrine of the Church of God in Christ, if, as Sister Swan has, the spirit of evangelism in her, then to be an evangelist, there's certain things that go through that they certify. And as we're speaking of in the world, okay, thank you, Father. Why would this be necessary? Why would it be necessary for any one of us to have a certification? Because Elder Falk would tell you, we do. It's in my wallet right now. I have my certification as a pastor and elder a Church of God in Christ in my pocket. He should have his certification in his pocket as an elder. Okay. Can you think of any? See, see, good, because I was going to get on it if it happened. Can you, can you think of a reason that you're not supposed to? And there's a reason for it. But I'm going to put it to my, my, my wonderful brethren and the sheep of the flock that God has made me pass over. What would be an occasion that something would happen? And it would be beneficial for you to have that on your person, your certif certif oh God help me, I'm tired. Certification that you I'm sorry? Yes, what would be bene what what event, what things, what could happen where it would be beneficial for you to have that on your person? That's my first question, but I have to give a level. I think marriage. Um, Very good. But Funeral? I was just thinking anytime that you're at a place where uh, a clergyman or a man's body is needed, that you would step up and say, I am. That's yeah. very good. So everything that you just said was true. Everything everybody said was true. But see, that would be in a formal situation. But if you're on a desert island, but if you're someplace and two people say, we want to be married. Is there a man of God here that can perform it? And then later on, when they get off the island, if somebody says, I changed my mind, because, excuse me, please, Brian married us. He don't count. And then somebody would say, are you talking about Elder Park? Yeah. Oh, he does. It counts. <laughs> You may have to work out the rest of the paperwork for whatever state you got, but if you're saying it doesn't count because that person of God, no. They're certified. It counts. Okay, did you have one you want to bring up? Very good. Visiting the sick in the hospital. Because anybody, see, it may seem, and that's why we, we, by God's grace, that's why we have a teaching church. Because we have to understand what's the per, what is one of the reasons for title. Because we know people abuse them, especially in 2024. Yeah, I, God, please forgive me if I'm wrong. I think there's more church hurt going on now than at any time ever before. Because they, they don't want to teach anymore. Because if you teach, you have to correct. And they don't want to correct because they may lead a church. But if you just encourage, if you just support, if you just make them feel good, no matter what craziness they do, then they won't leave. And you still get to make it look like you got a full church and you still get their tithes. But they're still walking around hurt. And you got people doing all kind of evil. And still, if somebody was to ask them, do you belong? Oh, I'm a member of the church of Sutton. Huh? Got two boys together saying they have a met. They got two girls together. You got people gambling, getting drunk. And they'll still say, oh, yes, I'm a member. And nobody at that place has ever told them, you know, your membership comes with things. <laughs> in order to be verified, in order to be valid. Amen? You're not going to be a member of Alcoholic Anonymous if you're drunk. Who going to believe you? Amen? You ain't going to let nobody be your dentist. If they ain't been certain, they're not, they not board certified, they ain't done nothing in a long time, but they tell you, well, you know what? I need to, I need to get something done. Can I operate on your mouth? Most of us with some sense would say, no. So that's some of the reasons. And there are times where somebody may be uh, passing. And somebody will say, is there any person of God here? We want you to pray. Now, anybody can, but there's one, one person that's supposed to. If you got that certification, you're not supposed to go, well, Lord, do they mean me? <laughs> And you know, now, if you don't have a cert and certification, if nobody else has one, God will speak to a soul. But you know he holding that person responsible. He looking out of heaven, 
Amen. 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 Now, I saw you raising your hand in church just yesterday. You were praying and shouting and praying over so and so. And now that you're out in the street and somebody had a car accident and they may pass, you're talking about something. Is it really me? Go ahead. Uh, I was just thinking, uh, it, should, it doesn't matter if the person that is sick and needs prayer, whether they are. Uh, no. Yes. Unfortunately, doctrines will do that. Unfortunately, a doctrine will say if the person is Catholic, a lot of times that person will say, "Are you a father?" As far as Catholic priests, and then you, we're supposed to say, "I am of the Christ." Do you want me to pray for you before you go? And they tell you no because you need to perform the last rites. That's my tradition. Then that you have to honor them. You can't force it on them. That's why the Bible says, let each person be persuaded in their own heart. You're a Christian. And a lot of people don't know, for the longest time, Catholics did not call themselves Christians. They said they were Catholic. If you ask them, are you a Catholic? I mean, a Christian? They said, I'm a Catholic. They would tell you that. It was called Catholicism. It's only recently that they started saying, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Some of them still don't. Some of them still don't. And if you talk about the Holy Ghost, they'll talk about the Pope. I'm telling the truth. How you feel with the Holy Ghost? Well, the Pope said, I asked you. <laughs> yes. According to their faith, he is their God representative on earth. And he can call the shots. Even though that's what Jesus Christ was crucified for, that he broke that. Oh, yes, something you want to say, sir? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, that too. They had her in there. Wow. I'm not surprised. Because no, and, and once again, I just want everybody to be free. I'm not putting anybody down, but this is what Jesus Christ was crucified. He said, Call no man father, but him that are in heaven. He said, Why do you go to them? To absolve you of your sins, go in the closet and, com and, and confess to your father. Confess your sins one to another. What they do, they created the confession. That's not what he meant. He said, what's the point in you having an issue if you're going to go to the temple and you're going to sacrifice a turtle dove, but you're not going to go to the person that you cussed out and still grit your eyes and roll your eyes at him when you see him in church? Yes, it happens in Christian churches too. But we're going to call it out. <laughs> we're not going to give permission to it. And unfortunately, it's the truth. Some Catholic churches give permission. Did you do your five pill marriage? Okay, well, then you've been forgiven. But you're still giving it a, what do they call it? The stink eye. You're still giving it a stink. But you did your five, you did your hell marriage. We're going we gonna to call it the way it's supposed to be. Amen? Amen. So now, by God's grace, I got some questions for you. We got three different categories. We have of the spirit, of the flesh, or both. Everybody in? Of the spirit, of the flesh, or both. So what God wanted me to do is give you some scriptures that's going to talk about labor. Because remember what the title is, Is Your Labor in Vain? So God wants you to understand what your labor is. And, and we're already on the right track. But just to help us, because remember, if you study to show thyself approved, a workman Rightly dividing the word of truth because we got some scriptures that would confuse you if you don't have it defined correctly. Where is first lady? Thank you. So three different departments of the of the spirit, of the flesh, and of the of the or both. It can be both. The, the first one is going to be Psalms 128, verse 2, which is one of our devotional uh background readings. I'm gonna read it to you. Psalms 128, verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. So are we talking of the spirit, labor of the spirit, labor of the flesh, or both? I'll read it again while you think. And thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. So which one does that lean more to? Because it can touch all, but what does it lean more to? Labor of the spirit, labor of the flesh, or labor of the flesh and the spirit? Which say you? I think 
They flesh, flesh. Anybody? Okay, we got two. Okay, we got two both. All right, you can be the tiebreaker. Pressure. Both? It could be both. Because thou shalt eat, that's that's physical, the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. So that could be both. Uh, it is talking about the labor of your hands working, but it's saying happy that you can do that with your hands. And then we can go on. So we can say both. Amen? Oh, thank you, Sister Margie. That, okay, that's both as well. Let's go to the next one. The next one is going to be Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. Proverbs verse 14, chapter 14, I'm sorry, verse 23. Is it labor of the spirit, labor of the flesh, or both? And the word reads, in all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury, which gets you in trouble. So is it saying labor of the flesh, that all labor there is profit, labor of the spirit, or, or both? What you think? That was hard. Yeah. All labor and all labor there is profit, which means in any work you perform, if any work you perform, there's going to be increase. There's going to be increase because remember, profit is increase. And any work you perform, there's going to be increase. But then it says, but running off at the mouth is just going to get you in trouble. I would agree that that's flesh, because of course being uh, creatures of the Lord, we're supposed to carry ourselves a certain way. But it's just saying, if you go to work, there's going to be some type of increase. You know, Maybe you'll get in better shape. There's going to be some type of increase. Okay. Now, this one, let me see if this one is a little bit more difficult. That's, oh, this one is a teaching experience. That's why God had me put this in there. Now, we were talking about labor. Now, if you read this book, this book can be confusing, but you got to put it in its proper place. All right? And now we just read it in all labor there's profit. Right? Now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 11. Ecclesiastes which is Greek for the preacher. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 21. And once again we are studying the three, three different levels. Is this labor of the flesh of the spirit or both. And it's good for us to be able to figure this out because we want to know if our labor is in vain. But still, when you talk to somebody else, which, this is useful when somebody says, I don't come to church because I'm working. Because y'all going to run into them. I don't go to church because I work seven days a week, but God knows my heart. These same people will be so dedicated to their jobs, dedicated to looking good on their jobs, that, I, you know, I like when I do a job, it's got to be done right. I'm just not going to just do any kind of thing. I'm going to throw my heart in it. You come to church? I prayed yesterday. But when it comes to working, especially if they got to work with their hands, they like to step back and look at it and say, look what I have done. So with that labor, that's why we're trying to, because they think that's going to get them into heaven. And I know this sounds crazy, but please listen. They think that's going to get them into heaven. Never taking a vacation. My boss can depend on me. I'm always there. On time. Stay late. And y'all know as Christians, who the ones still got to do most of the work? Y'all know it's us, but they still going to call. That person talking all that trash will come right over to your desk. Can, can you help me out? Ms. Williams, um, they asked me a question. That, and then once they get it, they go right back to saying, I, I got it done, boss. You ain't going to give, you ask that person, they ain't going to give you none unless you standing right there. And some of them, they see you, they stand out and tell the boss. Well, you know, actually, uh, Brian did contribute. They still ain't going to say anything. Yeah. And they may pull you aside in the hallway when they see you outside. Uh, Brenda, I ain't mean nothing, but, you know, he just wanted to know who did the work. And actually, you know, it was me. You did help, but it was me. I can raise my hand. I know everybody in here has had that happen. Because guess what? Yeah. It happens more to Christians than anybody else. Because <laughs> they know, what are we going to do? We're going to go back to work with a gun. They know who we are. We're going to flip the tables over. What are we going to do? Get on the loudspeaker system and tell the truth. So-and-so lied yesterday. 
they know who we are. <laughs> and God gonna take care of them too. Oh yeah, that's right. Mr. Hop's going through that little bit now, aren't you, Mr. Hop? <laughs> Can you help us with such and such? You gonna give me a raise? Um, no. But we still need your help. All of us have been through that too, have we not? Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 11. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Now we just read, in all labor there is profit. But then we have in Ecclesiastes where he says, there is no profit. One, one more time, that's why you got to search the word out. I will tell you right now, there is no conflict. There is no confusion. You just got to know what he's talking about. And there are, I'm going to give you a hint, one, two, three, four. There's four words in that sentence that let you know what the difference is. It, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 11. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. So is he talking about labor of the flesh, labor of the spirit, or labor or both? Anybody else? There's four words that help you to, to know. Let me read you the four words and I'll come back to you again. The four words are at the end of the sentence. No profit under the sun. That means a lot. Because the sun lets you know where he's dividing the heavenly realm. So he's saying anything you do under the heavenly realm for you ain't going to profit you nothing. Yeah, very good. And it is vexation, which means it can get you in trouble. So anything you do under the sun, which means just earthly, just going to work, I'm a great worker. I work triple time. They can call me anytime they want. All that is vanity because you're patting yourself on the back. Because you ain't doing nothing for God. It's going to vex your spirit because when God sees you in heaven <laughs> and he says, what have, work have you done for me? I was a master plumber. And who was that for? I was a master carpenter. And who was that on? Who was that for? Yes. I put satellite dishes on. I put solar panels on. I did this. I did that. And who was that for? Well, you gave me the job. Oh, it's my fault. How many people you know do that? How many people you know get a get a vehicle and then they don't go to church because they work overtime for the vehicle and they tell God, but you gave me the vehicle? So this one would be of the flesh because he's defining it by saying, and remember his word from above, when we ask is for you to grow, there's no, it's not that anybody's wrong, it's just somebody is going to increase. Amen? Because we need to know the difference because in 2024, we're going to know these people. And some of them do go to church. They do go to church. But if you ask them, you're going to church, but it's church in you, you will have an issue with them. Because the word tells us how we're supposed to act. Amen? But you know we're in a time where false prophets are everywhere. And man, there are some people following some false prophets. And the people don't think that's true. It's interesting. It's true. People are following false prophets right now. And they're just looking at TV about one person watching about a comet going off. And, and they're thinking, well, that could happen to my person. You don't think so? Okay. All right. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Very good, very good. And that gives us the opportunity to, to remind the people online and ourselves that we all have spirits. 
And when the Bible is talking about a spirit, a person can have a spirit of anger. A person can have a spirit of peace. A person can have a spirit of understanding. Okay, when we see an evil person in Walmart and you look in their eyes, it looks like inside is on fire and you don't want nothing around that person. They got a spirit of rage upon them. So when it's talking about vexation of the spirit, it's talking about the emotions of a person. That is really going to vex the emotional content. I mean, he's not going to know peace because God's still going to be trying to talk to that person. That person is working 24-7. That person that loves to be on call. That person that loves to be the man or the woman that everybody calls on. And But when God calls on that same person, I ain't got time for you. That's what's going to vex them. Amen? Very good, Ellen. That's what's going to vex them. All right, so let's go down to um, yes. 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 And that's the most important thing is the time. If God has a situation where he can give you another chance, I've had it happen to me. Where because of the church that I was at, you y'all, you know my background. We were someplace, and the Lord told me, go lay hands on a little boy and pray for him. But because I knew how they felt about me, I didn't move. And it was it was a split second. It was a split second. And in that split second, when the women of the church went over and prayed for him. And I knew in my heart, and God told me, because you didn't go. And I felt horrible. Not only for the little boy, and of course the devil would come to you and say, well, somebody prayed for him. No! You don't want that. I knew I was supposed to do it, and I said, I am sorry. Give me another chance. I didn't just leave it there. I said, I'm sorry. Give me another chance. And next thing I know, he came past me. And then I, ta- I prayed and laid hands on him. And he told me, thank you. So it didn't diminish what happened with her. I was just trying to get back in line with him. So it depends on if there's time, he'll use you again. But if there's not time, it's gone. And you don't ever want that to be that God, you know, what's that song? Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. If he's moving in the church or he's moving and you feel the presence, I feel it now. And in, and he and you don't have that spirit, don't do it without me. Instead, your spirit is, well, you know, that's them over in the corner. You're missing out. Because remember what we say here, if he use you, he's got to touch you. Just like when he told me lay hands. That wasn't my power. That was his. So anytime he uses you, he got to touch. Don't you want God to touch you? Don't you want to feel the power go through you to somebody? Don't you want to see that person light up like a light? And you know, it's like a little kid when you were little and your mother and father was doing something. You said, can I help? Daddy, can I help? Weren't we like that? And how did you feel when you when you grabbed a grocery bag when your parents still had it? <laughs> they still had all the weight, but you had your little hand on there. You was thinking like, I helped them, not daddy. Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> it's him doing it. And remember, Abba. You, you, y'all know what Abba means, right? Actually means daddy. That's why he says father, Abba. Abba means a, a more affectionate term. Papa, pop, pop. That means it's a more affectionate term that you got a deeper relationship with your dad. That you can say, that's my daddy. Not just my dad, that's my daddy. Amen? All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 11. We're going to do another comparison. Matter of fact, Hold that. Let's go to Colossians. We're going to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. We're going to do that because we're going to come back one more time with a scripture from from Ecclesiastes. Because I want you to understand, as you're going to Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24, please understand Solomon is the writer of Ecclesiastes. And Solomon was going through. We don't really have a time frame for when he wrote it, I haven't been able to find it. I'm sure it's out there. But remember, Solomon had fallen from grace from God. And if our, if you read the book and you see the stuff that he's saying, you have to understand this has to be when he was fall, he had fallen from grace. It's not written like somebody who was walking strong 
and seeing everything as good. It's written as somebody saying, oh man, it don't matter. <laughs> so remember, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. It's all right, Sister Clark, we understand. You're an important person in spam trying to get you. Colossians, it's, it's right. Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to come back with Ecclesiastes, so just keep your finger there. Matter of fact, it'll be Ecclesiastes chapter 1. So right now we're in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. All right, here we go. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Okay. This one should be easy. Spirit. Spirit okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Spirit. Anybody else? So whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord. So that means actually it is truly to the Spirit, but it means whatever you lay hands on, that's for God. Uh, one thing I used to tell them in Metro when they used to get angry with me, I would tell them, you don't need to watch me. And Sister Brenda, she knew this about me. She was my supervisor one time. Not that she was like that. I would tell them, you don't need to watch me. If you want to, you're wasting your time if you watch it to catch me. Because <laughs> I would tell them, I work for God. Yes, and, and I, that's who I'm trying to. So you give me a task to do, I'm doing it to please my father. I used to tell them, I get, I get paid by God. He just gives it to me through Metro. So you ain't the one paying me. He's the one paying me. And they would get smart with me every now and then and say, okay, let us hold your check and see what happens. I said, hold it and see what happens. <laughs> you go in and hold it and see what happens. That joke turned on them really quick when they went, oh, okay, I see your point. Even if I don't believe what you're saying, I don't want to find out. Okay, so we just read, knowing that all that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Okay, now this is going to really help you to understand where Solomon was when he wrote Ecclesiastes. So now we're going to go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 14. In this answer, I know you're going to get easier, but I just want you to see the comparison. All right, so uh, the one I'm going to read, is it of the spirit of the, of, of the flesh or is it of both? And it's going to really help you to see what spirit it, that Solomon was in when he wrote this. All right, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Verse 14, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. So is he talking about of the flesh, of the spirit, or both? Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 14 and we just did uh, Colossians and we're comparing it to Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 to 24 where in Colossians chapter 23 and 24 it says whatsoever ye do do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ but then we read in Ecclesiastes where Solomon says I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. So first question is, is he talking about flesh? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. First question is, is he talking about the, the flesh or the spirit? Yes, he is. He's talking about flesh. Okay. I do have a little delay on there. She said both. Okay. <laughs> He's, he's indeed, and remember, the thing that helps you to understand is those four words he puts together. But here, it's uh, one, two, yeah, it's still done under the sun. So he's still telling you under the sun, which means on earth, which means earthly. So it's still of the flesh, and you can tell that Solomon's got some issues. He's very mad. <laughs> but even in this, it's the truth if you're only doing it because it's under the sun, which means earthly. But if we look at what Colossians says, it says even if you're on earth doing it, if you're not doing it for man, but you're doing it to God, then 
you will receive the reward of the inheritance. So this lets you know that if you're doing it of God, which we already have determined by God's grace, which was true, that it's of the spirit, then it is not vanity. It is not vexation. So if somebody was to read this scripture and not search it out, they would be so confused. If they would just read the whole chapter, because the funny thing is, uh, matter of fact, I may go to it if I can. The funny thing is, is if you go to the end of uh, Ecclesiastes, after he says all of that, and it's, <laughs> it can depress you. <laughs> I would tell you right now, it can depress you. But after he goes, I'm trying to find it. After he goes to all of that, come on, help me. We go. After he goes to all of that, the very last chapter of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, I think it's the last one of Ecclesiastes in the 12. Of Ecclesiastes? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, if we go to, uh, well, I have 12. Yeah, for Ecclesiastes. Chapter chapter 12. That's all right. Chapter, we, I, hey, I love to learn just like everybody. It's okay. It's okay. Chapter 12, if we go to the last two things, after he says all of this, after he complains and tells you pretty much your life ain't worth nothing under the sun. Everything you do under the sun ain't nothing. It's just going to vex you. Then he comes back with some sense. 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. And then he comes back with 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, hold up. You were saying before that it was all vanity. Vanity ain't good. You were saying before that it was all vexation. That ain't good. But by God's grace, he gave me a little bit, and I'm going to bring you back to your mind. I'm, I let you say all that stuff because you had some issues, but I'm going to bring you back to your mind. So you remember, what did I teach you, Solomon? And he came back and said, this is it. Matter of fact, one time I was asked to read scriptures at a church. That's all I read was 13. I just read one. Let us hear the end. <laughs> Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. No matter what you're going through, the conclusion of it, fear God and keep his commandments. That You do that and you're going to be all right. You ain't got to worry about all the rest of the stuff. Fear him and keep his commandments. That's your duty. Amen. So now let's go. To, I'm, I'm glad all of you are getting it. One more time. We have to have it because there, there's some confused folk out there. And the more Holy Ghost filled we are, the more we're going to draw. Which is a good thing, but y'all need to be prepared when they come to you. Okay? When they try to tell you that, okay, that, you know, I'll say it, Jehovah Witness. When one of them come to you and tell you something, what we got now, the tribe of the Hebrews and the 13 tribes, and, you know, you got people saying that, oh, no, when the Bible says that man shall not lay with man as he does with woman, it means taking a nap. Well, you know, it didn't say anything about it in the New Testament. No, actually, in the New Testament, it does say that likewise, because it said men burn in the natural lust one for another. And then it said then likewise the women. Because you got some people say, you don't say nothing about, you know, women for women. Yes, it does. And you're going to run into them. And when you run into them, you'll be equipped when the Holy Ghost tells you that you can say, actually, that's not true. It is in the New Testament. And then ask them, if you would like to learn more, come to church. <laughs> If you really want to know, because there's what God had me to tell one young man, because his father wanted me to meet him, because by God's grace, his father realized that God had given me a spirit of wisdom. So he said, I know you can reach him. So when we first started our talk, I said, sorry, Lord, he told me to say, I got a question for you. Are you trying to find the truth or do you want to prove a point? He looked me in my face and said, I want the truth. So then we started talking. And then he started talking about the law and how, you know, Christians were all messed because we don't go by the law and all this other stuff. And I said, and, and he told me immediately, I said, what about the law of Christ? He said, there is no such thing. 
I said, you never heard of the law of Christ? And then he got insulted. I didn't, I didn't say anything to insult him. But see, he came to the meeting to prove a point. I didn't know it. So he thought, let me prove something to this Christian. But then when this Christian said, what about the law of Christ? He was mad. And I showed it to him in the Bible. The law of Christ. And then he harassed me for like two weeks until I had to block him on my phone. Sending me pictures of a devil and of a demon and you fake Christians. And yes, it attacked me for two weeks. Of and I said, Did you try to prove? He said, That's why I came to meet you. Because I knew you. I said, Oh, so you lied. And I thought you said you were better than the rest of the Christians. That's when you really went off. So if you know the word, it protects you. Amen? Amen. Because he tried to tell me that it was my job to argue with him. That's what he said to me. You spoke, you, he called me a broke down preacher because I wouldn't stop what I was doing to argue with him to two in the morning. See, that's what we said. You got to know your labor. He was trying to tell me that my labor was arguing with him. No, it's not. And I told him, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, so you're a broke down preacher. You ain't got time for somebody. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. Amen. 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 So, and that's any as any of us. Is there going to be time that there may be a conflict when light faces the dark? There's always going to be conflict. You know what did it say when Jesus came into the world? The light into the world, and the world knew it not. And what did he say? And I believe it was Isaiah. He said that we we did not esteem him. Yes, that's going to happen. But we have to understand, I did what I was supposed to. And some of you just smile. That's right. Thank you. When, and especially when you know that you said what God told you to say, Sister Clark. When you know you said it, and they say, every time they see you, they twist their face up. You did what you were supposed to. That was the fault. So if they don't want you to be around, you just say, okay, and remember what we read last time on, that, on uh, the, uh, the elect woman, where he said, and if. That person wants to come into your house, don't let him in. And then he said, and then when you tell him to leave, do not say Godspeed. Because then the word says, you're going to have responsibility for whatever evil they do. Because I understand they will go to the throne because we all want to be judged. Well, if I was doing bad, then why the hell the fuck say God bless you? Go ahead. I'm afraid to because I found in the day you say the same thing. I thought I was using that person's oil, so I said, okay, God bless you. Then I found out that person is more than you, but I'm not supposed to. Amen. And I accepted that the the of Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And that's a great place to be is grateful because there's some people when they look in the word, they find out that they made an error. They get mad. But what that means is when you find out you've made an error. Oh, my God. Now I can be straight because before I wasn't doing right. But now, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly what happened. He looked at him and he said, she got it. <laughs> and then they start celebrating in heaven. And if they celebrate in heaven, we should be celebrating down here. That's why there's supposed to be a quickening whenever we get with other Christians. We know how they are, how the world is. We're supposed to be happy when we get around each other. You know? And then we encourage each other. Okay, well, time to go back to work. <laughs> then you pray. You be strong. You be strong, too. Then you go back. That's how we're supposed to do. And as you said, and if somebody's doing evil, we don't say, God bless you. They go into the liquor store, they go into gambling MGM, you know, and you got Christians to say stuff like, well, good luck. No! Not only do we not believe in luck, why am I giving you a good, a good feeling about you doing wrong? But this is where we are in 2020, because most Christians want to be right by everybody, and they'll let anything go on just so somebody won't call them out. Oh, you wanted them Christians. Yeah, I am. Well, we just want to invite you. Thank you. I was trying to figure out a way to tell you no. <laughs> but now that you want to invite me, oh, I got my whole day. 
Okay. Yeah. Did he stop being a servant of God when he got, went into the party? See, that's what they don't. They keep trying to. Oh, we're talking about a famous bishop that went to a party where there was uh, immoral behavior, and he was there. Yeah, it's going on a lot now. It's going. It's, it's actually a lot of the big name preachers with five and seven and eight thousand. It's starting to come out how much dirt that they've been doing. Yeah, see on TV now. That's him. That's him. I don't want to ask you a question. Um, is it good to do more than one Bible study? I mean, with different people. It depends on the spirit. Um, the Lord has to lead you because you got you can't eat everywhere. So what will happen? <laughs> well, because this is a feeding. Remember what God said to His number one, Peter: "Do you love me?" And he said, "Feed my sheep." And then he changed it, and a lot of people missed this. He said, feed my lambs. And we know a lamb is an immature sheep. So we're talking about somebody ain't even made a sheep level yet. They're just a lamb. So when we're talking about Bible study, what we have to ascertain is, okay, we know that God has given this church a spirit of teaching. And we know that some other Bible studies don't have it. They just go by a prescribed book. I mean, we look at the book, but we just, you know how I teach, by God's grace. I start and I just take off. <laughs> because that's what he gives me. He shows it to me different. He tells me sometimes I just go by the title. Okay, so if that person, okay, let me ask you something. What if a person is going to a church, and God willing, we'll get to that answer. I will just pick this up next week. What if somebody wants to study with you, and they tell you out their mouth? Because at my church, we don't learn like this. So I want y'all to answer me. And the fuck you last, because I, I see you you're choking me. So you're gonna be so what should happen? Go ahead. I have co-workers who used to ask them, I have co-workers like that. And she told me at lunchtime during my and um she had gone to a Baptist church and invited two Catholics, but she went to the Baptist church and she wasn't quite understanding what was going on. But she asked me on that Monday. What did all this mean? You know this lady actually wanted to tear pages out of my body? Mm -hmm. She said, I want to learn this way. Wow. She said, I want to learn this way. And she actually was trying to tear pages. I had to get the lady a Bible. Mm -hmm. Bible. And I told her, you need to find a church that's preaching this word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she was looking for, well, she told me, you know, back in Baptist, Methodist, whatever, you know. And she said in this particular church, she was getting stuff that she had never heard before from Catholics. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they don't use the Bible. No, no, they have some on YouTube. She had never been taught that before. She came here from another country and whatever. And uh, that's how they were taught. Well, that, that, in that situation, that goes back to what we, and you did it, that goes back to what we were learning for the last three weeks your ministry versus the ministry. Right. You worked your ministry. You gave it a word, but then you pointed it to the ministry, which is what's, what is supposed to happen. I would hope anybody here uh, would point to his words from above, or if they have a church where they know that the word is being taught. Amen? I may have gone ahead of myself a little bit, even though I'm still going to let Elder Paul have his, have his moment. But yes, and, and because, and just to be short, we, we taught this before, we may get back to it. William Tinsdale made the first Bible for the average person to read. And his penalty was they choked him at the stake and they burned his body. The Catholics did because they said, we don't want the common man to know this word. So they actually killed him. So the word of God by certain religions wasn't meant by them, not God, wasn't by them meant for everybody to have. So some of these people are still continuing this when you go to church and they don't even give you, they tell you what scripture they don't want you studying anything else. I've been at churches where they actually consider you rude because they said a scripture and they started preaching, but you kept reading the Bible. If I'm up here and I say a scripture and I keep going and I see other people are reading their Bible, I'm thinking God talking to them right now. They never saw that before. 
And then when they saw it, God said, so since you never saw this before, let me show you that. And then when he wants to turn them loose back to the rest, he will. But that's why it's a good thing they have a Bible instead of a phone because it won't always look the same and it won't always feel the same for the person. Amen? Amen. So go ahead, what you were saying. Well, I was, I guess, when you asked me the same with them last Sunday, it was on her, they told me my family. Oh, and oh, um, I told you about certain things with them that I didn't feel was right with the Lord and with my spirit, definitely. Mm -hmm. So my sister called me and gave me to get on Bible study that Sunday night. Okay, so you can imagine me, crybaby. <laughs> it felt like they were all ganging up on me. What? Um, they were saying things like, uh, ugh. well, anyway, I had to leave the Bible study and then she texted me, you left, you need to listen and all this other stuff. So my husband, being my protector, mm -hmm. stepped in and asked them to not call me. And I don't want that kind of division in my family. And I'm hoping they're looking at YouTube so they can hear me now. Uh -huh. Well, so tell them, tell them, contact me. I will. Yeah, because I, I, by God's grace, I'm I'm your spiritual covering under God. Tell them, contact me because they're out of order. Yes, because you belong here. So your first, remember, we were learning that in your ministry versus the ministry. So what they did was the devil used them to try to trick you yes. and to tell you, okay, this is our ministry. If you are real with yes. your ministry, then yes. come be a part of ours. Why would you do that? Why would you be happy that I'm in the house of the Lord serving him? Because you were growing. And when certain people see you growing, it offends them. How dare you get close to God without my permission? How dare you start understanding things? I have a place, and we all have people in our family like this. When I look at you, I see a place where you're supposed to be. You're still five. You're still eight. You're still 12. You're still that little person I fussed at. You're still the person I said you ain't never going to be nothing. You're still that same person. And I look at you, and I see God on you. How dare you get to the point where you feel like you're something other than what I said. I need you back under my thumb, so let me call you under the pretense of saying, and we all heard this, let me tell you something. I'm going to say it in love. The Lord want me to give you this message. And next thing you know, they just cut you all kind of ways. And you wonder, God, why didn't you tell me? And the Lord will tell you, because they wasn't talking for me. That's why I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you to go see them. We got a relationship. And then when you belong to a church, then you're supposed to call. You should have called me. Hey, um, you're our family. We have Bible study. We have church. You need to be with us. We love you. If you love me, why are you cutting me down like that? Remember. Why are you making me cry and hurt me? Yeah. When all I want to do is serve God. That's because they want because you step out of the order of what they call the family. They saw you going before the Lord, pray to oh, so you think you are Christian, do you? Well, let me validate that. I will tell you if you're a Christian based on what we say to you in Bible study. You have to do Bible study our way. Remember, okay. We got to remind ourselves, when teaching even goes forth, especially preaching, it's either for you what you've been through, what you will go through, and what you are going through. So when we were teaching and receiving from the Lord on your ministry versus a ministry, God was preparing you. And that's exactly what happened. They tried to say, no, that ministry, which is God, you serving God, is not important as our ministry. And before we when we ended that because it, it was time, I just we have examples. Do you remember what happened with Aaron and with Miriam and Moses? That's what happened with you. They used the pretext that Moses had a black wife. Yes, he did. She was from Ethiopia, and they used it as a pretext to be mad at him. So they called him out on it. But the Bible even says that's not what it was. They said out their mouth to Moses. God talks to us just like he talked to you. God is with us just like he's with you. Why should you be in charge? And because Moses was so humble, he cried. And it hurt God's feelings to look down and see Moses quiet, quiet. So he said, you tell them, come to the tent of me. And he told them to come. And God said, Moses, I call my friend. Moses, I speak to face to face. But when I talk to you, it's in a dream. When I talk to you, it's different ways. Not so with my servant, but you're going to say you should be in charge? 
And then he told her, hold your hand out. And when he held her hand out, it had leprosy. Because he wanted to punish. And then Aaron said, okay, I got it. <laughs> said, Miriam got in trouble. Remember, who was the oldest? Miriam was the oldest sister. And then he healed her, but then he told her, be outside the camp for seven days. But they were saying, our ministry is more important than the ministry. This has happened in the word of God over and over. That's why we had that teaching. So that's what they were telling you. Our family, this is going to happen a lot in 2024. There's going to be a lot of family members. Okay, let me put it to you this way. What if they were having Bible study all during the week and you participated in it? And let's say they accepted you. Let's say it went well. But you did it so much, you couldn't make it to Sunday school because you was tired. They, you did it so much that you found yourself tired and you're running late for church and everything. But then you would say in your heart, but I was doing the Lord's work. I was helping them to understand. I was praying with them. Would that be in order? No, it would not. Because it goes against the ministry. Because when you join a church, that means you're supposed to be helping the body of Christ. And if they're talking, and remember what God said, he that does the will of my father in heaven, that is my mother. That is my brother. So it ain't that you're family by blood. You're related by blood. You're family by the spirit. We're your family too. So you're not betraying anybody because of what's going on there. So don't be free from that. Be free. So I didn't even go into detail, but I did tell her with protection. I said, I'm free. Amen. You know, I'll be back to that, not sleeping, crying. So, and that's the devil. That's the devil. And that's the, the other, devil. The other sister texted me today and said, how's your mouth? That is exactly how she said. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm praying that you're okay. I'm praying that with your general surgery, everything is good. She literally said, how's your mouth? In other words, you're punished because you're not with us. So my husband, he he's not in a good space right now with my family. He had to let me know. Don't come, don't call. Stay away. Wow. My wife is doing good. She's serving God. She's fine. Stay away. They're working for the devil. Oh, yeah. They're working for it because it hurts because my that's my family I grew up with. Yes, yes. But you gotta actually let that go. I did. I okay, did. you gotta actually First lady, I told her I'm free. I'm okay. You still, you still, as God would allow, love them. But, but as far as you seeing that same, and this is what they want: that same little girl in the playground. You got the devil wants you to have all those memories of back when you were little, the meals that y'all ate together, how y'all played together. That's not you anymore. But that's the devil trying to take you back to that time. So you got to let that go. And it's that, oh, I'm related to you. Yes, I am. But now I got a family in God. If you're doing the right thing, what, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, what Jesus said, I come to separate father from son, mother from daughter, and then Jesus said, and an enemy of a man shall be those in his own house. Because Jesus said, there are going to be decisions that are going to have to be made. But he lets you know, but I'm able to do it all, so you don't worry about that. If they say, you know, I'm going to mistreat you because you you got to trust God. And pray that God's going to make it right. But you got to give, because this, this also shows that they ain't right. So they can be saved by you letting them know that they ain't right. Amen? Everything uh, tried to stop me from getting here to tell you this tonight. But I told, now you have to close, because I have to get here. Pray the, I needed to talk to my family. Praise the Lord. To let you all know and get advice. And, you know, God would have me to do what I'm doing right now. Amen. Amen. And you're availing yourself. Amen. That's what the Bible means by avail yourself. Open yourself up to healing from the, and we're going to pray with you, by God's grace, as soon as we, we close out, to, to, to seal, because you're already healed. You're already made, made good. It's just that the devil tries to convince you that you're not. And that's what he does to all of us. Amen. Amen. Every time that feeling of fear come upon me, that's what I said. No, I said, even 
Amen. 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 I do. I do. I feel so much free, so much better since I've come here. I rest. Well, I didn't rest Sunday night, but I rest, I've been praying and resting, and God has been clearing my mind, clearing my path, and I just feel. I just don't want to leave this place. Well, praise and God. I, and, that, and that I know you all have to go home. Yeah. Stay here, stay here. Yes, you do. And, 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 and on that matter, next time, contact your pastor. Now, if, if, if this was a church and it is not that you weren't able to grow here, that's the only time God would let that happen because he did it with me. I was at a church that rejected who I was in the Lord. And if somebody asked me to be the chaplain of their poetry ministry, even though they were at another church. And my first thought was, well, if you belong to this church, why don't you? But they said that for some reason, where they, and it was a large church with like 5,000 members. But for some reason, they could never get somebody to be a chaplain for their ministry that was under the church. But God was using that to give me a chance to operate, to give me a chance to pray, to give me a chance to do it. It's all according to faith. And then that, when that person asked me, I wasn't trying to be insulting. When that pastor asked me, you don't think he should have talked to me about this? I told him, she laughed. I told him the truth. No. And the, the reason why I said it was, would it, why would I ask you? You're not letting me do anything here. Right. So I know what you would have, <laughs> you would have said there. So no, I didn't ask you because he was the one that said, go ahead and do it. Because I saw him first. But see, you don't go to a church like that. We're going to have a prayer thing for us. We're going to have a, you're already in Bible study. And I've already told you that God wants to get you to a certain level that we're going to have women's prayer. We're going to have those things, but he has to have everybody at a certain level first. And, and how is that going to happen if they're able to call? Oh, what you want, mine? Then you're going to have to call me, Pastor can be, because i got to do. And think about how that sounds in order. Pastor, I can't do the stuff for our church because my family wants me to do stuff for them. Yeah, and because it is. And then let those same people talk to you. Let their pastor say, I want you, okay, well, we can't pray tonight because my pastor, but it ain't going to count for you, though, because that's how the devil works. Go ahead, Elder. You may have forgot. You've got. <laughs> that's all right. Look, that's what Bible, look, it's, it's to get, Bible study so we can have a functioning understanding of the word. Yes, it's good. that's why I gave the Lord had me to read the scriptures. You want, you want to write them down, but you want to be able to apply them, too. Because when do these people come at you? That's how they come at you. Did you know such and such? And if they say something to you that you don't know, you will know the spirit of God. And then you can tell them, well, you know what? I don't know that exact scripture, but I know him. What you just said don't make sense. I'm going to research it. But I'm telling you right now, that don't sound like it makes sense. Because that main thing is, you didn't know that, huh? Well, maybe you shouldn't be a Christian. I've had people tell me that before. Yes. <laughs> and, and as we and God doesn't and what did Paul say? I have yet to arrive. Paul, God doesn't want any of us to be to the point, and I, I would never say that because I feel too much. But did you say I don't need? I've had people tell me I don't need to read my Bible anymore. I've read it a couple of times. I've had people tell me that I don't need to go to church. I went to church from the age of such and such and such and such. Oh, so it's like a bank, and you didn't make so many deposits. You living off the interest of it. Is that how it works? It don't work for nobody else in the Bible. Nobody. Jesus had to obey. He had to go to John the Baptist and be uh, and have water and be with, and be baptized. And then God spoke and said, "This is my son, who I am well pleased." And then what did John the Baptist tell him? "You coming to me? I know who you are. I'm not even I'm not even good enough to tie your shoes." And then what did Jesus say? "Suffered to be so, because this is what my Father's word said." So because he said it, even I must obey. These people, don't they think they know the word. <laughs> they don't know the word. They know enough to burn. So I'm sorry that they hurt you. But let your spirit grow from this. Amen. Let it grow from this because this ain't going to be the last time. All of us are going to have people from the outside say, it can happen to me too. 
And, and it, it could be that it could be unaware. I might have a lot on my mind. And somebody could say, hey, could you come to such and such? And I'll pray about it. And then I'll go. And then it could be a test from the Lord. That when I go in, I go, Ooh, nope. You're not going to stay? I uh, know I'm not going to stay. Why, you make us feel bad. Well, <laughs> you may say, I'm sorry that you feel bad. Because then, as we talked about before, then I'm in trouble. So the conviction of the Spirit is going on. So if you feel bad, maybe you shouldn't be doing something. But as for me, well, we'll stop. We'll stop smoking since you're here. We'll put the cigarettes out and we'll pour the drinks down as long as you stay. See you next time. Tell you what, be better if you don't do that next time you call. Now, if God tells me to stay, then I'll stay. Most of the time in those situations, he ain't going to tell you to stay. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we'll, we'll close out now unless somebody has something else they want to say or bring up. Uh, we'll, we'll continue this next week. And we're going to do the other scriptures where Jesus talks about your labor. Uh, I'll let you know in advance. You can think in your spirit, does your labor here follow you to heaven? Does your work follow you to heaven? Is the labor and work that you do down here recorded in heaven? Is God going to look at your work? And in this, I'll give you a hint. We'll talk about it next week, God and women. Do we have the thing next week? Oh, we got the thing next Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. yeah, we won't have it next week. We won't have it since the uh, clock next week. We have to go to um, to Baltimore. Yeah, and Minister Hops will be given an inspirational word. He was speak he was speaking for they gave him ten minutes, but he's gonna give that change. Yeah, we'll send you it'll be on YouTube. And remember one thing about YouTube that I like better than Facebook, you click it and it opens. It don't say you must sign in. It, it, Facebook be doing that sometimes. All he does is just open up and you get to watch it. Amen? Okay, with that, we will do our cogent close. Not the first one, not the second one, but the real one. Oh, he's watching? Well, praise the Lord. I'm still praying. Still praying for you, Brother James. Yeah, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Keep telling James, you can't stop us from loving you, James. We're going to look out for you. Amen? That's the way this church is. We try, as I told the young man that I was talking about there, God gave me two things. He said, save him and keep him saved. So that's the two things that this church focuses on. Is a person saved? Let's get him saved in the name of Jesus. Are they saved? Then let's keep them that way. Because you know you got a lot of churches that if you say I'm saved, they just leave you alone. You join the church, I'm saved. Okay, take a seat in the back. All right, everybody. And they don't, they never check on you. They never talk to you. You can't tell them that you got anything. What, you're sick? Tell them, aren't you a believer? Well, Pastor, can you come and pray for me? Pray? Pray for yourself. I'm not lying. You got a lot of churches like that. But let it be an unbeliever or somebody who's drunk on the side. Oh, they'll go and lay hands. And they'll go and do a whole lot of things for that person. But let it be a, a somebody of the faith. And that person say, you know what? I'm a, what's the word say? I, Lord, I believe. Help thou. My unbelief. So there are people who believe, but they may have a, you ain't supposed to look at them and say, and you call yourself a Christian. And now you got this bad report from the doctor. You feeling some kind of way. No, you go encourage the person. That's all. Tell the Lord. All right. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your healing word. We thank you for the labor that you've given us, God. We thank you that you look out of heaven and you say to us, I've got work for you to do because I see something in you. I see what you are meant to be. I see what I have planned for you. You know that there are so many that need the help of Jesus. There are so many who think that they know, but they don't even know that they don't know. And that you want to bring certain people into their lives and say, if that's what you think, let me show you a more excellent way. That we can just tell them, if you already believe in the Christ, but you're still not acting like, let me show you a more excellent way. That, God, we can help somebody out of the darkness, somebody out of despair, somebody over whatever is holding them down, and set the souls free. Thank you for those who made it out. Thank you for their fellowship one with another. Thank you for them caring about each other. Thank you for them loving and supporting each other. And thank you for this Bible study that we can all, all grow 
until we see you that bright getting up morning, whether the sky cracks or whether you just call our individual souls, that we can go to you and we can say, Lord, thank you that you gave me a body of Christ to keep me until I can see you. Bless everyone here. Bless those online. Bless Sister Jordan. That's the only one that I know about, except for Brother James. And we look forward to James being with us one day. That one day his heart will say, I just want to know more. I just want to just know more. Just let that, that yearning, just to understand more, bring him. Because there's always another level. We thank you for that. And we praise you. As we leave this place and not out of your presence, please protect this house of yours. His words of love ministry. Protect it from break-ins and break-outs and hindrances. Even the parking lot, even the sides in the back. For this is where your servants come to hear your word. Heal us, lift us, and increase us. Even the parking lot. And as we go to our homes, protect us on the road. Keep away evil from us. And if anybody stops off on the way home, help them to make it quick and get home safely so that you can bless them all the more. And once again, God, bless them for even coming out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And now I have to exit out, and then we're going to, all of us going to pray again before we leave. Oh, I didn't see it. And Sister Gaines. Did I, oh, I see it. Okay. Amen. Good to see you, Sister Gaines. All right. Until next time. All right.